This is Hidden Killers Week in Review. A look back at the most prolific stories of the week. This is the Hidden Killers Podcast with Tony Bruschi. Featuring author, psychologist, and daily contributor, Siobhan Scott. Was Diddy running a cult? Uh, and, and I say it not necessarily in the David Koresh sort of way, more so just kind of on the, if you look at like everything, the boxes that are being checked, does it kind of look like a cult? Uh, the the level of insulation that he had, the the people that he had surrounding him on the payroll. I mean, there's even uh, in some of the civil allegations uh, are talking about that he had three women on the payroll strictly for sex. Uh, mm. I mean, <laughs> it, 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 it seems kind of cultish to me if you're able to do things that way and and very much you know not have influence from the outside. You're very much controlling who's coming and going and what people are saying to you and all the people that are around you are pretty much worshiping you as if you were some sort of a god. That's a really good insight. I, I agree with that. Um, because a cult is always centered around a charismatic, powerful leader. And they develop this kind of insular group where mm -hmm. there's the insiders and then the outsiders who don't understand what's going on in, inside that that um, system. And so, yeah, I think that's a, a very good way to look at it. Another form of cult leader, not the religious mm -hmm. kind, but, you know, centered around sex. We think of that Nexium group. Yeah. Which oh, yeah. Was definitely a cult and centered around sexuality and exploitation of women. I mean, how does one, you know, kind of get into that sort of space? Is it just the, the money and power? It, it kind of it slowly kind of comes up and it starts slow where you have some people that like you kind of got your posse or whatever, if you will. And then it just kind of keeps growing and growing. But how I mean, how do the uh, extreme thoughts or beliefs kind of come into play where one finds this sort of behavior, this sort of lifestyle number one, to be needed or even acceptable uh, around, I mean, it, it seems like a lot of mind twisting that one would have to do to, to get there if it's not, I guess, already just ingrained in some way. Yeah, I think when we're talking about these, you know, often um, awful people who who create such chaos in other people's lives and abuse them and cause damage, we go back to that lovely term, cluster B personality mm -hmm. disorders. Yeah. And as we know, personality forms very early in life during childhood. And this is a person who doesn't have normal empathy for other people. They see people as objects that they can exploit and use. And that's dangerous. And and so this is somebody that, you know, from the get go was not wired like the rest of us. And it's amazing as well. I mean, the influence that someone like that has and, and to never be touched. I think that's kind of one of the things that a lot of people are, are wondering about. We've seen other major figures go down for uh, bad behavior. I mean, that's putting it lightly. Bill Cosby, you mentioned that. R. Kelly is what also comes to mind. But this almost seems more like on a level with Jeffrey Epstein uh, yeah. in terms yeah. of the, the trafficking, the allegations that have been going on and the, the insular world that they have around them. One of the things that stood out to me in, in a lot of this are the allegations of having cameras, uh, you know, not just, I mean, I get you're famous, you got wealth, you got to have cameras around for your own security, but not in bedrooms, not mm -hmm. in, not in bathrooms, mm -hmm. not in, not in private mm -hmm. places, where they shouldn't be. But some of the allegations are saying that there's cameras literally uh, everywhere. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm wondering what kind of clout that gave him or control that gave him uh, mm -hmm. over those that, mm -hmm. that did spend some time with him, even innocently spending time mm -hmm. with him. Mm hmm. Yeah. It, it also speaks to some of the, the aspects. There's a very specific kind of sexual um, deviancy, paraphilia, where the perpetrator likes having the hidden cameras. You know, well, I, there was a case in California just uh, last week in the news where a, a guy had planted a camera in the women's restroom in a Starbucks, busy Starbucks, and just got off basically by having the footage that no one knew they were being recorded. Um, I've seen sex offenders that will record their girlfriends or wives 
um, during sex secretly and then post this online. I mean, it's r- really horrendous, but there there is a specific specific type of of sex offense where that is what people enjoy doing. Why? <laughs> Yeah. I'm, I'm just, I am baffled by this because it's like, okay, you, we're in a world now where if you have a certain kink or something, there's a website for you. There, there, there's, yeah. why would you put yourself into this sort of situation where this, I mean, you're violating laws, you're violating yeah. all people's rights. I mean, it, it goes to such an extreme. I, there was just one the other day I was shocked to hear about, um, it, it involved the, are you familiar with the, the, gas station chain in the south called bucky's um it, I, it's a I've very big if you go to texas it's everywhere people like make a point to stop there uh and it was one of the founders children thank god it was not in the bucky's uh but at their their residence uh, where he was filming his guests in the restroom mm-hmm. and i was just like what on earth is this i mean i mm-hmm. i just and then to have this but i'm wondering if it, if, if if the deviancy here with with Diddy, the allegations, if this is true, um, is is the sexual aspect of it or is it the uh, oh, you're going to say something negative about me? Guess what I have on tape? Yeah, um, certainly could that be that and, and could be both. Yeah. yeah. Just a, like a, a power, a control mm-hmm. move, uh, if mm-hmm. you will. Uh, mm-hmm. I know that's what Epstein certainly ruled by. It's going to be interesting uh, to see who all comes down uh, mm-hmm. with Diddy in this case. When we were talking about Epstein uh, and cameras, that was, you know, we're talking world leaders, politicians and things. And we'll probably yeah. never know what happened on those tapes because the powers that be will never let us see. Uh, but Diddy, I don't think it's quite the same. I think we're going to find mm-hmm. out a lot of people had a lot to do uh, with uh, with him. I think there's probably plenty of unwitting uh, participants or not even participants, just, just people who have been in and out of his house in the 90s uh, you know, every celebrity was coming in and out of Diddy's parties. Martha Stewart, to to you name it, it they were there. Um, but uh, to this day, uh, in, in recent years, he's been kind of laying a little bit more low, not as uh, much in the spotlight as he once did. Are we learning why? I mean, is this why? Because maybe he realized he was, you know, traveling a little too close to the sun. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, certainly could be. I did not know about Martha Stewart. <laughs> oh, everyone. Yeah, party. I mean, there, it's but it was but it, there were public parties. They were yeah. not like Martha Stewart's. They're trafficking people. Um, right. But but there was it was just he had a very different image in the the nineties. Um, but the the fact that you know all these people are now coming out. We're hearing a, a lot of people who were once close to him making claims. Uh, or, or making comments uh, about, you know, kind of here's what you know, chickens have roosted. It's coming back to you. Mm-hmm. Mace, mm-hmm. who was uh, in a lot of his videos back in the day and was a rapper on Bad Boy. I think he very loosely went and became a preacher um, uh, after a lot of that. Uh, you saw Mary J. Blige making some comments about uh, not afraid to burn bridges. Uh, I- I'm wondering how many people are now going to be questioned about their awareness of what he was up to uh, and, and mm-hmm. what we're going to see have happen mm-hmm. here. Yeah, I think this um, investigation of this situation is going to go on for a long time because there's it's got to be really broad. There's got to be a lot to look through, even just going through all, you know, the video evidence, I think would take months here. The uh, The idea earlier on, being no one is going to talk because of, you know, the clout that he held. And in number one, you could go, if you're not very famous, have no power, you could go, well, no one's going to believe me, number one. Uh, number two, if you are, he may have something that he could destroy you with. But now that that cloud has lifted, let's talk about that a little bit and the impact that that has on survivors uh, of for not speaking and now does this enable people to speak that some of that has mm-hmm. been lifted or is the damage mm-hmm. still you know, likely there that they're still going to be a bit intimidated by, you know, the what ifs here. It'll probably go both ways, you know, depending on the person. I think for many survivors, when the veil is lifted on a perpetrator and they understand that, you know, this wasn't my fault, because as non-rational as it can be, people who are violated and exploited sexually 
generally to some degree blame themselves for it. Why didn't I see this coming? Why did I put myself in that situation? And so there's this huge element of shame connected, you know, to to being a victim. And I I think this will be very therapeutic probably for many of them because it's like a sigh of relief. It's okay for me to talk about it because this wasn't just me. Look at the scope of this. And so I think it can be empowering when this happens, when it's exposed. How do you reconcile this if you're a family member of, of his? He was about to get on an airplane to go to spring break. They caught him off guard. He wasn't trying to flee the country. I mean, it it did very much look like that at the moment, but uh, authorities said he had no idea. And he, I believe there's some statement or something that's come out that's revealed that he did not have any idea. It just happened to be that they stopped him on the tarmac Uh, with his kids going off to spring break. I would, I mean, we don't know the dynamics there. Uh, Who knows what they've seen uh, or been Mm -hmm. exposed to, Uh, We know, within the confines of having Diddy as your dad. But this has got to be a lot to try and reconcile if you're a kid. Absolutely. Absolutely. Horrendously difficult for kids when they have a parent like this. Um, You know, it changes them. It changes their view of the world. And it's uh, probably something that the rest of their lives, this doesn't mean that their lives are going to be destroyed by it, but it certainly means it's going to be a difficult thing to carry. Sick of the ads? We opt to. Start listening with no commercials now and get access to all of our episodes in advance of everyone else. Become a True Crime Today Premium Plus subscriber on Apple Podcasts. Search True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts or go to our podcast page and sign up now. True Crime Today Premium Plus. Sign up now.